back to Teresa Lyons, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question is... Would n acetylcysteine be beneficial for your child with autism? So first, I'm going to start with a warning. This information is not for beginners. n acetylcysteine is used as the culture media for candida, meaning that if your child has yeast overgrowth or dysbiosis, NAC is food for exactly what you don't want to grow. In the lab, NAC is used as food, that's what scientists call culture media, for candida. NAC is powerful in mobilizing toxins that are stored in cells, but the body needs to be healed enough for actual detoxification to take place. Otherwise, what happens is NAC starts pulling out toxins that are stored in cells, and if the body is not functioning enough for detoxification to take place, you're basically increasing toxicity in the body. So again, this is not for beginners. This supplement is not for beginners. A special diet needs to have been implemented for several months before even considering NAC. And after several months on a special diet, you might not even want to use NAC because it wouldn't be appropriate for your child. So once again, please do not even consider NAC if you haven't put your child on a special diet specific for their needs. Indication of need for NAC. It's used when someone has chronic problems with detoxification, immune system dysregulation, poor neurological functioning, and inflammation. What you actually see as those four things in your child would be irritability, self-injurious behavior, hyperactivity, and lack of focus. And that there are some contraindications. So again, please, this is not for beginners. And you really need to have an efficient discussion with your healthcare practitioner before implementing any supplements, especially NAC. So what is NAC? It's the acetyl derivative of the amino acid cysteine. NAC is considered to be generally well tolerated and used for a variety of medical conditions for the past several decades. NAC is widely recognized for its role as an antidote of acetaminophen overdose. A little more on NAC. Preclinical research studies suggest that NAC may modulate pathophysiological processes such as oxidative stress, neurogenesis and apoptosis, mitochondrial dysfunction, neuroinflammation, and dysregulation of glutamate and dopamine neurotransmitter systems. So you can see NAC is very important in a optimal functioning body. So let's get specific NAC in autism. That's probably why you're listening to this video. So I'll go over some of the clinical data as to why maybe you've heard from another parent or maybe you've done a Google search and you're thinking, oh, NAC sounds good. This is the scientific reasonings for why you might have heard that. In 2012, a double-blind placebo-controlled study with 29 children who had autism found that there was a significant decrease in the irritability scores via the ABCI subscale when children were also treated with NAC. Another double-blind placebo-controlled study, this was done in 2013, with 40 children with autism, and they examined it adding NAC on to risperidone, and they found that there was a decrease in irritability, again, just like the previous study, but that the core autism symptoms weren't affected. And in this clinical study, it was noted in the research that those who were already on risperidone started out with a significantly higher irritability score. So it's just really important to understand the actual patient population this was studied in. So those who were already being treated with risperidone were significantly more irritable. Another double-blind placebo-controlled study, this was done with 40 children with autism, and it was done in 2015, and they found a significant decrease in the irritability and hyperactivity when NAC was added on to risperidone treatment. 
There are a few case studies in the literature that show improvement in the core symptoms of autism with NAC treatment. Uh, the clinical studies that have been done, those three previous ones, they're relatively small. So you have you know, less than 100 kids in each of those studies. So it's great to see that NAC actually has an effect on irritability, but obviously more research could be done to really investigate how NAC can improve the core symptoms of autism, if it could. Averse effects, we certainly do not want to harm our children in any way. And once again, please don't consider NAC unless your child is healing significantly already. So there's previously reported adverse effects. They're basically mild, but there's abdominal pain and discomfort, heartburn, flatulence, cramps, vomiting, and diarrhea. You can see those are all related to the GI. So that's why it's really important to heal the GI first or as much as possible before adding NAC, if NAC is even needed after healing the GI tract. Just wanted to point out this piece of information that the largest rate of adverse effects was seen in open studies using cannabis as well. This wasn't particularly found in autism because there weren't any NAC cannabis autism clinical trials, but the clinical trials that used NAC and cannabis saw more adverse effects. And I know many parents are either using or considering use of cannabis. This is the reason why it's really important to work with a knowledgeable practitioner. You don't wanna just start giving your child supplements thinking, oh, I heard this is good, let me try it. No, please do not do that. Work with someone who's extremely knowledgeable. And if you want any of these scientific references, here they are.